come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Sometimes it's on Sundays. Sometimes it's Fridays. We don't know. Though Today it's Saturday. We don't know the difference. No, it's always to them on Saturday. Merry (laughs) Christmas and a happy new year. Happy holidays. Uh, we hope you, while well, you're about to, uh, this week, whatever you're, you're celebrating, hopefully. Um, and also, we want you to know that we've been doing this thing on our uh, Facebook page. Well, I mean, on our social media, we've been mm. uh, collecting your suggestions, and you've been voting on movies that we're going to watch yeah, in January. Now. It's all done. You can't do anything about it. <laughs> so. so now it's time to yeah. sit back and tabulate the votes. Mm. We're going to do those four of the top four vote getters. Mm-hmm. What if someone demands a recount, Colin? Yeah. What if I'm the one that demands a recount? I think it's going to wait. All right. I was going to say, people on the podcast can't demand a recount. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Do we get a veto? Do we get a veto? I, think I don't think it. so. I think no. you have to Is go with the well, no. Unless, well, I don't know what's going to happen because I haven't. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. I mean, they have been totaled up by the time you're listening to this. Yeah. But I assume that, you know, if we get, uh, you know, two of them get the same number mm-hmm. hopefully it's all high numbers you get like four of them that have the same number then yeah. what do you do because i think uh yeah well, i don't know we'll figure, we'll figure, we'll figure don't, out. by now we figured it out that's right by the time yeah by the time <laughs> you listen to so, consecutive tuesdays until the winner is crowned <laughs> yeah. um so who are these internet radio superstars john michaela holly and i'm colin and uh, we also want you to do us a favor, uh, just, you know, since we're talking about Facebook, hey, why don't you uh, go on over to wherever you found us. Well, I mean, sorry, uh, the whole writing in. Uh, <laughs> no, never mind that. Go to wherever you found us. <laughs> Shut give up, us Tom. the like, the star rating or the review. Uh, all that stuff helps us get found by other folks uh, so we can become <laughs> the uh, the fastest growing uh, internet movie podcast review show in the world. You can just go to Facebook and just like put up four stars. That's fine. I guess that yeah. works too. Yeah, like us on Facebook. Where can they find us on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. And on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Uh, you can get a hold of us by email Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com or follow along on Instagram for the time of your life. Tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. What do we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a little classic called Christine. Is John it called Carpenter's Christine? Christine? Yeah, I was going to say. <sighs> John Carpenter's Christine. <laughs> I, you can't. It says <laughs> fine. When I met IMD, him, if you look it up on IMDb, it just says Christine. What well, says John Carpenter's know. Christine? Of course it does. Well, when I met him, I, I specifically asked like, what were the movies that like don't have John Carpenter's on them? I think mm-hmm. it was Memoirs of an Invisible Man and Big Trouble in Little China. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting because one of my friends got a the Thing poster signed by him at a convention that said John Carpenter's a Thing. It was like a fan art poster. It wasn't like an official one, and he got all mad about it and refused to sign it because he was like, I didn't sign off on that poster. I didn't agree to have my name put above hmm. it. And he was all weird about it because the thing is, you know, remake, obviously. So oh, he was very right. touchy about hmm. signing things that said John Carpenter's the thing. That's John hmm. Carpenter I know. <laughs> <laughs> the curmudgeonly yep. and, uh, John Carpenter. Not this nice guy who's like, I'm involved with Halloween now. That guy, I don't know who he is. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, and like, his, that guy's, like let's that put him weird. on space. He yeah. can do whatever you want. Whoever, make it a good film. Just whoever was with him me. at the convention was taking pictures of him getting his autograph so it's literally like a gif of John Carpenter getting mad and then disappointed like it's a series of photos of like him being excited at first and then like unscrolling the poster and being like wait like, what? wait I didn't get paid <laughs> yeah. for this what is yeah. this shit it's John Carpenter I've always wondered if John Carpenter well I mean I suppose he said this at some point is he like always perennially frustrated that he just isn't a western known as a western director yes yeah I'm sure yeah probably but I mean I feel like he's that's always been is. a curmudgeon, though. Like that's just how he is, you know. I don't think he necessarily needs a reason. <laughs> there was a there was a clip I saw of him, uh, you know, because I mean you can find you know the guy's been covered all over the place. Yeah. One of the great living American directors, um, but yeah, he was just, he gave no fucks. Like it was mm-hmm. like in 1982 mm-hmm. or probably around the time of this, and he was talking about like you know just the state of the film industry, and it was like Jesus. You know, you wouldn't catch anybody saying that kind of shit who works in the business right. Right. now. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, because you got to work with these people. And mm-hmm. he was just like, I mean, he wasn't naming names, but it was just like, Jesus, bite the hand that, you know, feeds you kind of thing. Yeah, he don't care. Yeah. Uh, what would you call him? An iconoclast. He's uh, the, the perennial outsider in, uh, yes. in film. Uh, you know, John mm-hmm. Carpenter was never really, I don't think, ever acknowledged as a great filmmaker by his peers 
Mm. I don't think so. I mean, a, a section of his fan fandom obviously comes from that because people are like, you know, I mean, I'm one of them. I'll say that John Carpenter right. is like the <sighs> second favorite filmmaker of all time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I guess the French are like really big on the like over there. He's on a tour. Of you know, course. They, really? they recognize yes. oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Do you think when he dies, he'll make the uh, in memoriam cut at the Oscars? Oh, definitely. Oh, absolutely. But they leave out think... big people sometimes. Nah, I mean. It would be kind of ironic if they didn't put him in there, considering. Yeah. But it could happen. They leave out people all the time. He is also not like uh, go up to a random person, name the great filmmakers. They're not going to say the past three years. They John will Carpenter. not mm-hmm. say John yeah. Carpenter. Mm-hmm. Which but I think is any cinephile knows who yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you know movies, you know who John Carpenter is. <laughs> yes. I think so. At least there's that. If you know horror movies. You especially know who John I think Carpenter to some is. elitist people, though, he might be more of a genre director, and that's why mm-hmm. I think he could miss the Oscar cut. You know. Yeah. And this movie, uh, Christine, what year was this made? 1983. So this would have followed the absolute box office disaster of The Thing, 1982. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The movie that basically I think gave John Carpenter his bad attitude about. I think so. Probably. (laughs) Probably. Because that was, I mean, you think about it, that was his big shot to go like Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Right, I mean, that was Universal, it, right? Yeah. yeah, Universal Pictures, big, huge movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Because before that, his movies, uh, he did two pictures for Avco Embassy, which are, that's not like a major studio, right? Uh, the Fog and Escape from New York, and before that was the independent, you know, Halloween, mm-hmm. right? A couple of movies from TV. Sure, yeah. Elvis, sure. Elvis, yeah. Mm-hmm. Someone watch over me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so after uh, the failure, box office failure of the thing, then mm-hmm. he had to uh, take uh, just like, well, I need to work. Yep. And here's Christine. Christine was brought to him by Richard Kobritz, the producer who worked on Salem's Lot with uh, Toby Hooper. Toby Hooper, because uh, that was a Stephen King property, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so Kobritz Kub- uh, somehow had the rights to the, the books. I think mm-hmm. that this was set some kind of movie history as being like the day that the mo- the, the book came out the movie was being shot. Oh. Yeah. Or something like that. It was like really yeah, the close. Mo- the nice. movie was in the works before the book was pre- was released. Damn. Yeah. Because yeah. Stephen King, let's not forget, right, wrote the book that this is based yeah. on. <laughs> so yeah. This is two titans coming together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Bill Phillips got the, he he's the writer of the screenplay and he got the he got the book before it came out so he could read it over to decide if he wanted to write the screenplay because he was a little hesitant when uh, he heard it's a book about a killer car mm. <laughs> and he wasn't quite on board and he got halfway through it and he's like, I'm in. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Well, but this is the thing. Have you read the book anyway? Nope. No. no. You know anything about the book? A little no. bit. <clears throat> That's what I'm wondering. Like, what is the, what's the difference between book and I don't movie. think, well, you have to, we'll, we'll see where your research compares mm-hmm. to mine, but I don't believe that the car is an innate, uh, you know, evil thing in the no, book. No, in the movie we see, it, it starts out on the assembly line, you know, in Detroit, all the cars being made, and this one, it's it's implied that it's from the start. It's created and it's evil from the start. In the book, it's not like that. The previous owner of the car was an evil man, and it's supposed that his spirit attached itself to the car, creating the car to be evil. Mm-hmm. So it's a haunted yeah. car. That's much more Kingian. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I yeah. Like that. Yeah, well, it gets way into the weeds, because then yeah. it's like, you know, he basically, the guy's wife died in the car, his kid died in the car, that was somehow sacrifices to make the car a conduit for his yeah. soul after he died. Of course. You like know. a horcrux. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I and then I think this. he is... Uh, I think he is possessing our lead character of Arnie during the in the in the in the novel. Yeah. And I think there's uh, scenes where he's like riding in the back seat, you know, the old guy rolling gotcha. the bay. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh but the movie gets rid of all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They did they did it partially because of time. Just sure. they needed the time crunch and um because they wanted the car to be this evil object they I, wanted it to be like i'm kind of surprised I, it didn't yeah. get struck by lightning at the, <laughs> <laughs> at the shop yeah. <laughs> and come to life yeah. Yeah. And, they, yeah and they they saw too many comparisons to um um fuck what was it maximum overdrive no <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> basically i totally forgot where i was going with that was it yeah. another movie yes the car no the hearse 
No, not another car Warning movie. Warning sign. Not, uh, not another car movie. It was a comparison, a possession comparison. Oh. Um, fuck, kind of what movie am I thinking com- of? Whatever. Okay. I, I don't remember. Yeah. Sorry. Possession. Back. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, ironically, it turns hmm. out that the first killer automobile, killer machine story, hmm. I think was written by, like, was it Montague Summers? It was like in the 40s, and it was called Killdozer. Oh, oh, Killdozer. Uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful. That's a movie, isn't it? Did I'm not sure Killdozer? if I've got that name right, but uh, yeah, Killdozer, they've made into, you know. But yeah, yeah. No, that's a movie. That, that was also suggested a couple of years ago for, uh, or maybe this year too, for uh listener's pick. Yeah. Killdozer. But I, I think <laughs> that one is more like a sci-fi kind of thing where mm-hmm. like it gets an alien intelligence in it or something. So it's not like oh, demon-possessed wow. car. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know. And then let's not forget the classic 60s TV show, My Mom is a Car. My, my Mother, my, my, my mother, mother, the, my co- mother, my mother the, car. the Car. Yes. Uh, yep. From the era that gave you Mr. Ed and uh, uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Everything's alive! <laughs> that's a, that's, that's TV, TV executives on coke. <laughs> oh, it's alive! Yeah. <laughs> what a time for TV. They, they all saw short circuit and like, number five is yeah. alive. Is alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some dude, <laughs> some dude was shooting up going like, oh, it's brilliant. It, we can apply that to anything. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but as far as like uh, killer car movies, I, I can't. I have. I even have a copy of the Hearst, and I'm not entirely sure like, <laughs> why uh, you have it. Why? Well, because I haven't actually finished it yet. It's on mm. one of those like mega bundles or oh, whatever. Right, right, right. Uh, but I know the, the car Hearst. was a devil possessed car, which I think they had Anton Levey, who we mm. talked about cool. uh, ah, yeah, yes. on the Devil's Reign right, episode. Right, right, right. He was an advisor to make sure they had their devil shit right for a devil car movie, right? <laughs> Wasn't Warning Sign, isn't that a uh, Possessed Ambulance movie? Am I uh, wrong about that? Warning Sign is a, like Outbreak movie in a lab. What's, what's the Possessed Ambulance movie? The Ambulance? Are we still going to watch the Ambulance, with, yes. Uh, the Cohen, yes. Larry Cohen movie? Yeah, oh, The God. Ambulance. I'm watch yeah. that one. All right, so Christine starts off in 1957 in Detroit. Where else would you start? Right. Where else do uh, cars come from? Detroit. What kind of car is Christine? Uh, Plymouth Fury. That's right. Ooh. Mm-hmm. The 1958 Plymouth Fury. That's right. The Fury. Uh, Makes sense. I think Stephen King said that he wrote about the Fury because... He did not want a known car to be used, like the Thunderbird. He didn't want it to be a well-known car. He wanted it to be a forgotten car. Ah. Which is kind of ironic now that this is probably like one of the most right. well-known <laughs> cars yeah. Yeah, of that era. Yeah. Uh, trivia. Holly's going to be able to tell me if I'm oh, right or wrong on this, boy. that the uh, original mm-hmm. Plymouth Fury was not available in cherry red. Mm. It's true. And they made that distinction by saying this was a custom build. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Because I think it only came in like, uh, what was like, it? Buckshot brown or what, beige? Yeah. What was it called? Like Whatever it was on the assembly buck, line. Like buckwheat yeah. brown or buckwheat, yeah, yeah. something like Ooh, that. Like that. Yeah. It's awful. It's like a beige goldish <laughs> yeah. color. Yeah, uh, that was the only color. Green. It came in one color yeah. right? that, that particular year, and they made the the plur the the, the plurry the Plymouth Fury <laughs> mm. until like 1989. I was shocked. Really? Yeah. yeah, I had to go up and look. Like, what yeah. the fuck did the 89 one look like? Yeah, because the the detective's car in this movie was actually another model of the Fury. Oh, it, was it? Yeah, yeah. I think it was the detective's car. It's someone's car. Is is another model of the Fury? Yeah. There were a lot of cool cars in yeah. this movie. There were there were a lot oh, of yeah. cool cars in this movie. What did Buddy drive? Because I was like, I I'm I'm, I'm not like yeah. a car guy, but I, I recognize it. Like they're awesome. That's looking a good cars. question. There was some trivia online, and it was listing like 12 different cars that were also featured in this. And I didn't I mm. didn't keep track of what they well, were. Well, uh, uh, sorry. What's his name? The uh, the but the friend. Uh, yeah. Uh, Arnie Arnie's friend. Yeah. Oh crap. It, uh, Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> He's got the Dodge, uh, the Charger. Charger, yeah, which is a nice Charger. car. Yeah, but the only other one that I was like, ooh, that car was the uh, Buddies. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, Christine is evil right off the bat. Yes. We get, is it a joke, right, that we're playing George Thurgood's uh, Bad to the Bone? It's every, <laughs> every, <laughs> every. It's not a joke, it fits. Yeah. No, every musical choice in this is is deliberate. Yes, I, lo- I love purpose. them all. I do too. I love, I them, love them. So what's going on with the music? What are, what are we talking about? Bad to the bone. That's yeah, how we start. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, '50s tunes coming it's from. It's all. The... It, it's all '50s tunes. And it's also, they also uh, correlate to the situation that's going on. It's usually is... responding to the situation. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's hilarious. I'm gonna love you forever, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you keep on, on knocking, but you can't come yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. That, that was just great. my favorite. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I mean, I saw this done most recently. You saw this in probably the Transformers movies. This yeah. is how Bumblebee communicates, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. does that seem more like on the nose? Like somehow this felt like it wasn't necessarily... I mean, this is how Christine communicates, I yeah. suppose, through the radio. And she's expressing her feeling, her emotions. That's what it, yeah. yeah. That's Maybe what she's that's doing. Yes. Bumblebee but, is talking. Yeah. Christine is expressing an emotion. Yeah. And it, and it, I like when you brought up Bumblebee, I, we all went, and it's, yeah. <laughs> to, me, I, I, to me, it makes sense, because it's like, that's such a 50s thing to do, to like play the jukebox to like whatever situation right. is mm-hmm. happening. Like, it just makes sense. Yeah. I think it's cute. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of 50s. Like, I was actually shocked. How long it took before we heard John Carpenter score yeah. in this movie? Yeah, yeah. Because it's like an hour. It mm-hmm. felt like before we there was an yeah. underscore. I'm like, where's this John Carpenter music? He did it right. Yes, he did. He did. John Carpenter and Alan Howarth. Yep. Um, he's been playing this one at because uh, John Carpenter now is. Uh, in case you don't know, he's a musician. Yes, like a touring musician. That's why I think he's finally happy. <laughs> yeah, he's because like, he's doing that. How hard is this? You and know, the only and- the only way you can meet him on those tours is if you pay an ass load of money for VIP tickets. So sure. he cuts down on the people he has to interact with a lot by doing yeah. that. I mean, he's living the life of a rock star. Oh, for sure. I mean, for, to be like what and is his he kids like play seventy six or eighty years old or yeah. whatever the hell he is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rock star in his golden years. Yep, the life he never got as a filmmaker, he mm-hmm. gave as a musician. Because <laughs> yeah. of the life he had as a filmmaker. Yep. So. Well, yeah. I mean, have you ever heard, so he was in a band called the Coupe de Ville's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They did the theme song to Big Trouble in Little China. There's a uh, video, you can look it up on <laughs> YouTube. It's John Carpenter singing, <laughs> Big wow. Trouble in Little China. Yeah, <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah. So there's a reason why John Carpenter never had a rock star career. There you go. <laughs> you got to check that out. It's hilarious. Coop de Ville's <laughs> Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, okay. um, so anyway, then we flash. Uh, so on the assembly line, mm-hmm. uh, Christine kills at least one person and maims another. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. And then we jump to 1979, even though the movie's made in 83, um, where we meet our protagonist. Who are they? Arnie, the nerd. Mm-hmm. Classic nerd, got the glasses, he has taped up glasses. Who has a yeah. jockish best friend, mm-hmm. Dennis. The big man mm-hmm. on campus. Yes. That's right. Yeah. We recognize any of these guys? Keith Actors? Gordon. Keith Gordon, yes. We recognize from Jaws 2. Which I did not figure out until the end of this movie. Really? I, when, I, when was the last time you saw Jaws 2? <sighs> like six months ago, probably. I should, I should <laughs> yeah. know. That. Yeah, that was very recent, Sean. It's very recent. I should know. That, well, I kept, I'm like, what the fuck is this dude from? I'm trying yeah. to like imagine situations where I saw him and like... I mean, that's the only other thing I've seen him in. But You didn't grow up I, watching oh, Back to School like all the time no, like no. I did? I don't no. know what that is. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield? Great. Dress to oh, kill. okay. The it's Brian gotcha. De Palma dress to kill. He's, no. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, then he became a film uh, director. Uh, he made, uh, I mean, he was an actor for a while, but then he switched over and became like a pretty, you know. Yeah. Because he did Midnight be Clear known. and Mother Night and then eventually television where he did a shitload of Dexter. That's yeah, right. A Finally, lot of Dexter. Yeah, he did a lot of Dexter. And yeah. Fargo. I guess he did yeah. Fargo. He Fargo. did some Fargo. Which He's good still job. out there working. Yeah, bravo. Dexter and, Dexter and Fargo. Good job. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. And John Stockwell, who plays Dennis, he uh, was in Top Gun. He was. Oh. Here, there you go. <laughs> He's Cougar. You remember sure. Cougar? Yeah. yeah. Everyone remembers totally. Cougar. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone. The sequel. Yeah. Poster on my wall. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Are they bringing everybody back yeah. for Top Gun Yeah, too? we laugh, but he might be in the suicide <laughs> cop. True. He's just too. waiting by that phone. Yeah. Um. So classic nerd. Well, this is like an interesting part of the movie. Pocket protector and all. Yeah. I mean, like, he is splashing through puddles in his driveway. He's dropping, you know. No, the, yeah. They nail that, right? Yeah. It's very Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, because yeah. he eventually he gets his uh, glasses broken, has to use the, you know. Tape. White, buddy buddy white. Holly tape. Yeah. 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 White tape. Uh, Arnie. So what's going on? I, mean, well, I guess we should talk about these two characters. What's going on with, uh, you want to talk about Arnie first or Dennis? Pick one. Mm. Arnie. Arnie. Okay. So what's going on with his uh, situation? He's a, he's a very oppressed young man. He's a pushover. By his overbearing mother. Mm. He's also a pushover, and he's yeah. kind of stayed straight, like, straight line for his, for, like he says, his first 17 years. And so he's, uh, uh, yeah, and he's picked on a lot at school. Obviously, you know, he's the nerd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but picked on, like, by, I mean, the bullies in this movie are, like, uh, 40 years they're, old. They're, they're, they're the, <laughs> it's like the lead singer of White Snake is what this guy is, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Roided it out, too. Jesus, God. Like, damn, it's a 30-year-old yeah. man yeah. with gray hair. Is it me? Okay, so hair. maybe uh, there's a heavy 50s 
uh, air. Oh, for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. That hangs the, over this movie and they dress characters. like greasers, yeah. like the oh, yeah. the like street toughs. They yeah. dress like greasers. We, we've talked about that before. How the eighties and fifties are very much connected, yeah, especially in films. You know, I was actually couldn't let that nostalgia go. No, yeah. well, John Carpenter. I was reading. I think I was reading something about. Um, yeah, I was reading something about Christine, and he was talking about like in the in the eighties. He said, "No, he was like, now we're we're looking back to the fifties because we want just you know we can tell who the good guys and the bad guys are." Yeah, you know, it's like they went through the the turmoil and the upheaval, political upheaval of the sixties and seventies, and yeah. so that's why the eighty. I'm like, wow, that never yeah. really occurred to me that way before. But it was they like just want the easiness wanted, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more peace. They're looking back in their mind to the more yeah. peaceful. You know, like <laughs> you need- things were better in the fifties, right. yeah. so they have nostalgia for that. They era. need that distinction of the Greece and the socials. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. This like, movie oh, feels like right. nineteen. It takes place in the fifties. It, it really absolutely does. does. It really does. That's what I like about it. Yeah, because I mean, we don't I like really the vibe. see. What do you yeah. get from like? I mean, what tells you that it's 1979? Not much. No, not everyone's really driving anything. a classic car mostly. Yeah. It seems like uh, it. Yeah. That's yeah. what I got. Like we've got what? greasers. We've got uh, dudes with thick black glasses. There's like no pop culture references of the time to timestamp it at all. Yeah, I true. Because they're always playing 50s all, yeah, music. Yeah, the music is yeah. There's no music. 80s music in this movie. No, no not I at mean all. you can tell I, a little bit by some of like the girls' fashions and that kind of thing. But even like the guys, even are, that, but like even, even Kelly Preston very... looks like she she's like a pink lady at this point. Yeah. a little bit. Yeah, she's like this close to it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. Very... There's not much. There's scarves around the necks and everything. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not. I mean, that's I obviously think... a conscious choice. But sure, yeah, it really does make the movie feel like it's. Well, I mean, time. Timeless, it kind of feels like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't pin it down. It could be either one at this point. Bravo. Well, he's, uh, I mean, they, they, the bullies like uh, accost him in the, in the lunchroom. They stab his yogurt. Colin. Very violent. It's not a euphemism. It's in the, (laughs) they stab his yogurt. It's in the shop. Yeah, it's in the, Uh, right, right. That's right. Shop class. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I mean, it's 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 worse when somebody stabs your yogurt because it's just the brown bag. Uh, yeah. But that way it leaks out. Yeah. That, that went Lord. flying. When he stabbed it, he really got in there. And, like, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't just a slow leak. That the whole thing and ripped open. Yeah. And apple His yeah. buddy's got his switchblade at, uh, at school. We recognized a couple of the supporting players there. True. One of them's the dude from the, uh, from the opening of Ghostbusters, the guy who gets electrocuted trying mm-hmm. to figure out the cards. He's yeah. in there. Uh, mm-hmm. The other one is, uh, what do we say he's from? Uh, Friday the 13th, part two. Yes. And I think several other things. Yes. Oh, yeah. You've seen him. You've yeah. seen him around. He's hung um, out in the 80s. But Dennis comes to Arnie's rescue. I guess that's what that seems to be that this is the dynamic that's set up between these two. Like Dennis is the, well, it's a big man on campus, right? Mm-hmm. Football player. But he has like this, uh, you know, nerd friend. Yeah. And so nerd friend lives continually in the shadow of Dennis, who basically protects nerd friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think. Dennis loves Arnie. Tell you the truth. I got a vibe when they were in the car at one point. I'm just like, I think Dennis has feelings for him. Oh, best I can friends, see apparently. that. Oh, I know. I got that. a little more than that. I got. Because, like, there's no reason for Dennis to be single. Yeah. Like, if he's the big man on campus and he's a jock that looks like that, why is he turning down Kelly well, Preston's? You know yeah, what I'm saying? And why, like, and he's not going after, like, the, the new girl in school until mm-hmm. his friends, like, make him go yeah. do it well, and everything. I, just judging by their conversation, I did kind of get a, uh, yeah, like, been there, done that vibe from all of them. Uh, like, they don't like staying with a girl too long because they've already been there. Because he mentions that in the car with yeah. Arnie. He was talking about, like, yeah, we got to get you laid this year. How about her? And he's like, well, you know, I've been there. You've been yeah. there or something like I that. I kind of get that impression that they're just like the fresh meat kind of guys, mm. which is disgusting. But that's which the Which could mean it's I a get. small town, too. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Everybody eventually ends up with everybody else. I like my theory better. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, ready to think peace about it and then it'll go I, viral. I, I, I and then Probably. Well, there is. Uh, so Dennis uh, does seem to be. Well, I mean, I don't know. Successful with the ladies, at least. They, Kelly Preston is attracted to him. Yes. Uh, Doesn't say a word in this movie, does she? No. no. Just yeah, moves your eyes. Like, hi, Dennis. She, like, she hi, talks Dennis? to him at oh, the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. When he's walking away, he's like, hi, Dennis. Yeah. We'll remember uh, Kelly Preston from this show because we <laughs> talked about Metal Storm, the destruction of Jared Sin. <laughs> That's right. That's Jesus. how I remember Kelly Preston. <laughs> That's right. uh, Miss John she, Travolta. Is she on the wall? Not yet. One one away. What? Now. I'm yeah. surprised. I feel like she should be on there. <laughs> it feels like she shows up in a lot of random stuff. Yeah. Too. yeah. You'll Are have to sure? check check the wall and let's, yeah, let's, let's 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 take a look behind us and see if uh if there's a photo up there. There's so many of them at yeah, this Yeah, they point. just appear most of the time. Maybe she is. 
We did it. Uh, well, uh, we did actually put somebody on the wall with this movie tonight, but we'll talk about him when we get to him. I do not see her picture on the wall. Okay, well, oh. one more to go, and Kelly Preston will All be right. up there. Hmm. Um, if we're mistaken, we have to consult the keeper of the wall. MF Sir, Man. MF that's Man. right. Battlefield Earth. It's coming. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sure she's in it. She is in it. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. She's the in church Gaudi, too. So they put yeah. Barry Pepper on the yeah, wall after do, that, too. John, Sean, let's do Gaudi instead. Yeah. How about that? Uh, I'll, we could do both. I don't know. Who says we have to stick to one? <laughs> the True Volta family double feature. Yeah. Oh, this would be great. <laughs> that, that is like, I would say that's the spectrum of their career, but I think it's like... No, it's two shit ends. Does it make a spectrum? Yeah, so, yeah. well, were they, were they? Is that all they were? In? I thought she was in a bunch of. Why? Well, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Right, Kelly Preston we, we is digress. in this movie. She is uh, barely. Right. Uh, the main object of all the boys' attention at school is uh, Lee. Uh, Lee, Lee, right? Played by mm-hmm. Alexandra Paul. Paul mm-hmm. from who, Baywatch fame. If you did not know, there you go. I did not know. Yes. Nope, didn't know. Thank you. Yep, <laughs> yep. Baywatch and Melrose Place. Oh, yeah. Melrose oh. Place. I think she was in Melrose Place. Yeah. But mostly Baywatch. Or was it Beverly Hills 90210? She's that's not inter- a 90210. That's I interchangeable. I, it's not. Uh, but, no. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> they were on the, the same time and people crossed over. That's there what you I'm go. saying. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, the beginning scenes are all like, uh, you know, there's the new girl at school. Uh, all the guys are, you know, just like, oh, there's this new, you know, beautiful girl at school. They're all trying to ask her out. She's shooting them all down. Mm-hmm. And so eventually it becomes. she has a date? Yeah. Because, well, that's what happens when uh, Dennis finally gets a chance to ask yeah. her out. There's a lot of these scenes, I guess, work well the way that Stephen King stories do, at least I thought, yeah. that uh, you almost forget that you're watching like a supernatural movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that, this is these scenes work just as good in like The Outsiders or, you know, yeah. some kind of. Uh, Again, I just went to a 50s movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Or uh, Pretty in Pink. No, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but the big event that happens in Arnie's life, right, is that as they're driving home from school one day, he and Dennis, uh, Arnie sees in a in a lot uh, like a you know whatever in front of this guy's house. Yeah, just kind of the lot in front of his house. He sees the love of his life. He mm-hmm. has to stop mm-hmm. down and go back to look at her. Yep, and that's Christine. That's Christine. All right, what do we think of this car? What do you think of the uh, love a redhead? <laughs> I mean, well, at this point, it's in real shit shape, though. Yeah, or she's like, a it's... dirty redhead, but yeah. she's a redhead. <laughs> this car is beat to hell. Yeah, it is. How many cars did they use? To oh my play god! How many Christine cars in this well, movie? Uh, it was How many like cars? thirteen. Jesus, I, think, I heard like... between seventeen and twenty-three. Uh, it okay, feels like there had sure. to be a lot. There, there wasn't. Were. There wasn't an official number. Okay. It was just a rough. Because there were pieces of her everywhere, and they're the just like, is yeah. that one or a half? I the don't only know. thing known for sure is that by the end of it, there were only two models that were survived this movie. Every, everything so else sad. was trashed, and one of them was sold at auction just a few years ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because yeah. they found it in like a junkyard or something. Some guy, mm-hmm. some collector found it and restored it. There's only one picture car from Christine actually left in, mm-hmm. in well, it's a circulation in the world, I think. Mm-hmm. Damn. But they... I, I what I understand is they put ads in you know trade papers or whatever, and we're able to find these cars. This kind of blows my mind, right? That car collectors. I mean, unless it was just junkyards or something, wherever these, because what are they like thirty years old at this point? Mm-hmm. These cars sitting around that people would part with them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And just I like I got an old beat up, you know, fifty eight Plymouth Fury. And you can yeah, go ahead. Yeah, take it. Well, but at that point, like, it doesn't have the value we're looking at it with now. Do you look at a car from, like, the 80s right now, and you're like, oh, my God, that's such an amazing piece of machinery. You need to preserve it. You're like, no, it's a piece of shit from that's the right. 80s. If you're going to try and You're not far it, enough it, away from it in time at that point, you know? Maybe. I'm going to try and round up all the Dodge Aries Ks. Anybody care? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, they're going to say the same thing. They're going to say, here, have it. Yeah, you like, know? take it. And, like, maybe. It something to you. Yeah. Because I, I think, so. uh, well, I heard that they also, they used like whatever the uh, Plymouth Belvedere yeah. mm. was also used in a couple of these scenes. And there's mm-hmm. another car that they dressed up because they're going to beat the shit out of these yeah, cars. There's features on the Belvedere that weren't available on the Fury. So they had to use parts of it. They had to kind of mash it for different scenes. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But it's a. I mean, it comes to, yeah, I don't know my car. So I was like, it looks like it's all the same car to me. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, 
Yeah, you have to be like a serious car expert to really see yeah, the no, difference. Yeah, normal person to be able yeah. to pick that out. <clears throat> well, this is a thing like, I don't know, do women get all kind of googly moogly over um, cars the same way that, you know, some guys do? There are depends women. On the car. Yeah. Depends on the car and yeah. depends on, on the, the woman. Yep. Yeah. Because Arnie. This type of car I'd be f- pretty excited about. Yeah, this is a pretty If I knew yeah. someone that had a car like this, I'd be like, that's fucking awesome. Well, yeah. The, my, I mean, my I want to touch it. I guess about that is like his. I mean, you could say love, but his obsession for this car runs pretty, pretty deep, like right off the bat, you know, because they're in a toxic relationship. Well, but he's (laughs) looking at this piece of shit, broken down, rusted, you know, bucket of bolts. It's spewing, you know, black fumes out the back. He sees it for what it can be. Yeah. Well, then, you know, they insinuate at some point that the car kind of chooses the person and it like draws them in. Yeah, it draws them in. I mean, I think that's what's happening. Yeah, because yeah. he's like he's under a spell. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not just you know some guy loving a car. Like it's that's not the point. It's a right. supernatural thing. Yeah, yeah. She has fixated on him. Mm-hmm. I also think that there's a couple scenes where it's like maybe uh, Christine is working on some other people. Where it's like, why would you be sitting in this car when it's all looking like this? And it's like maybe it was like the boodle doodle doodle yeah. doodle right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, ooh, I got some close to it that it just yeah. put the, the whammy. whammy on me. Um. But uh, so Arnie sets about like restoring Christine using parts from uh, a junkyard mm-hmm. because his mom won't let him keep the um, the car at his house. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. not? Because she's a bitch. I mean, that's the really the big reason here. <laughs> yeah, I like don't see... they don't tolerate any quote unquote acting out, and they see him buying a car as acting out. Yeah, which is like. Wow, yeah, how dare he be a damn. responsible yeah, there's, adult? There's a whole like subplot of this movie about she his, feels like his she's from the 50s. contentious relationship mm. with his parents about yeah. them not wanting him to grow up, not wanting him to be on his own and move out, then having control over him. There's a whole like subplot in this movie to that extent. So later on, he even like goes extreme and be like, when he's possess- full on possessed, he's like, you ever notice that your parents are actually just trying to kill you? Like it's extreme. <laughs> yeah. Well, because what the rest of it, something about the idea that uh, eventually. You're you're replacing them. It was what did well, you say? I mean, there was like a you growing there. up means they're they're gonna die. Oh, they're getting yeah. old. Yeah, they're getting yeah. old and they're gonna. So die. in that from that way of looking at it, they yeah. would prefer to have you dead or something yeah. like yeah. yeah. Why didn't they apply that logic to the baby? <laughs> Why was that not <laughs> oh, the plot of the baby? Like he can't grow up because then I'll be old and <sighs> die. They did. She says that explicitly in the movie. I don't. I don't remember that. About, I try, but I try <laughs> no, not to remember. I blocked because that she said she now she'll always be needed. She'll always have something to take care of. Yeah, didn't we? That was her, that was yeah. her whole. Well, she uh, said. Well, it. I said it. Okay, in the movie. I think there's a difference between wanting to be a mother forever and not wanting to get old and die. Is my point. Well, that's true, but it's it's uh, it's in the same field. You know, it's just like I don't want this to happen, so I'm keeping it this way. If they yeah. keep him down. Well, it seemed like they had a plan, right? That they had a plan for his entire future, mm-hmm. and he, by exercising his own will, is breaking that uh, the mm-hmm. plan. Yeah, yes. he can't go to college now because he bought a car. Yeah, I guess so. okay. I guess yeah, it. because they were going to give him a car eventually. Apparently, according to uh, they just we'll have to be later. in control of everything. Yeah, yes. those parents. Yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, Artie, once he buys Christine and spends all this time with Christine, starts to exhibit. Um, his personality changes, yes. mm-hmm. right? Would you Loses say? the glasses. Yeah. Starts becoming cooler. He has Elvis hair. More of an asshole. Starts uh, cockiness. Yeah. Cockiness. Yeah. A lot more cockiness. He starts dressing like a 50s. Uh, he got his Rebel Without a Cause red jacket mm-hmm. going. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean let's, be real. let's be real. It's vast improvements. Yeah. True. Vast improvements. He's more assertive. He's more, you know. Yeah, he's not taking shit from anybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he looks better. Like it's you know, good job. And <laughs> shockingly, this whole possession thing is good for you. Yeah, good job. Shockingly, he is the date. Yes, of Lee. Lee's yes. going on a date with him. That's why she can't go out with Dennis. Or if you, yeah, you, which I kind of wish they had spent just at least another, at least one more scene, kind of building up how he's been changing. Yes, because it felt a little fast. Yes, it was I, very I much like, oh, I got a new jacket. Oh, I'm her date. Like it was, mm-hmm. I want, but he I want literally to, like changed as soon as he got the car. So for him, did. it was like an overnight flip. He did, but I, I wish we could have had one more scene that everyone else sees that. Yeah, maybe when he 
like a getting rid of the glasses yeah. scene. Like some one more level before he yeah, got to Because we, we he hear was. everyone express that he's changing, but like we don't see it quick enough. We see, like we see the, well, the movie seems to jump like months at a time. Like something yes. will play out, and then it's like it's even now it's October, yeah. now right. it's November. It's now even it's numbering December. the days in the corner as we go on. Yeah, but they're all like, like it was like October sixth, November thirteenth, November twenty, you know, November ninth, November twenty third, and then so on and so forth. Yeah. So they're doing yeah. weeks and everything. But we get a little hint when he you know comes out and is, and Dennis mentions, "Hey, no glasses, you look good," and he's getting more attitude with both of them at that point. Yeah, and then pretty much the next time is when he steps out with Lee at the football game. Yeah. Where Dennis gets his ass handed to him. So I wish we could have had one more. Just because I'm thinking of like the timeline and when he would have gotten that confidence to ask her out and then all of a sudden the football game, like I need one more in there. Yeah, one more. You know? One more would have been good. But, but it's a good, it I mean, like story wise, it's interesting because it, it, it inverts that relationship that they had, right? Mm -hmm. Dennis and uh, Arnie, because now here's some way that like Arnie has outpaced Dennis. Yes. And so yeah. suddenly the you know confident jock is like, oh, my nerd friend is now cooler than I am right. and going out with the girl I want to go out with. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Arnie's newfound uh, cockiness and newfound car is not un gone. It, that doesn't go unnoticed by Buddy and his gang because Buddy was expelled from school, I believe, because of the lunch or the show, the shop yeah. incident. He brought yes. a switchblade to school. He yeah. did. I always, I always find it funny when like the guy who's supposed to be the hard ass of the movie is named Buddy, <laughs> <laughs> or just, yeah. just, or he's like Ted. What's up, Ted? Was Buddy, <laughs> What's up, Ted? Right? Yeah, it was. it was. Okay, okay. I always think it's funny when like the tough kids or whatever are at the football game. <laughs> Yeah, right. you don't like, have to be here. Well, yeah, especially because they were expelled. Yeah, yeah. go like, get a can in an alley or like, something. What universe like, is this that like the tough kids are hanging out at the football game and they've been expelled? Like, like it makes no sense well, to me. I think and, like, they're just trying to get women. They would totally be the type to be ditching school all the time, anyways. Yeah. They are going to come to the after school activities. Right, exactly. What the fuck? I was like, this come makes on. no sense. Yeah. They're not going to be at the extracurriculars. Exactly. Well, no. Still in the society, unless maybe the, the town isn't big enough to have another school. So they can't go hang out with the kids from. Oh, is this town so small that this is the this, only this event is happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's the like Byron. Yeah, yeah, basically. So I mean, they do have a drive-in somewhere. I would though, say more right? like Stillman, where it's just right? like we have the football field and there's a road and a Casey's. Yeah, and a Casey's, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, nowhere to go. Well, uh, Lee ends up being distrustful of. Before we get to the return of Buddy, uh, Lee becomes distrustful of Christine. Also, mm. is it uh, some kind of? Well, it's a jealousy thing, I think. Definitely, but it also does seem to feel like she is the first person to start thinking that perhaps there is more to Christine than meets the eye. Even though it really doesn't seem like at that point she has evidence of this. Right. It's just she a, senses it. Yeah. yeah. And Christine senses her too. They and both they have many chlorians and they can see each other's force <laughs> energy. Yes. Off the charts. They yes. go to the drive in, which it's a movie with a drive scene at the drive in. So, right there, a couple again. extra stars for me. Yeah, again, 1950s. Which we right? Need, yeah. We need to talk about the movie that's playing at the drive in. What, was what it? is it? I it's, couldn't see it. What is I it? didn't recognize it. It's called Thank God It's Friday. Oh, and there's a oh, running no. gag in the movie where the, the main dude's car keeps getting wrecked. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Nice. See, look at that. Yeah. Somebody was thinking. Probably I love that. John Carpenter. I love that. You know, there was another <laughs> call out that I just saw not long ago, rewatched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm. And um, um, Leonardo DiCaprio's character yells at some hippies and says, Get that mechanical asshole off my, you know, out of my mm -hmm. street. And then watching this tonight, it's like, That's what the owner of the junkyard calls Christine. I'm mm -hmm. like, is that a uh, phrase that everybody used? Or is that like a, a deliberate pull from Christine yeah, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I think that's a callback. Aren't they driving a cab at that point? What's the car they're driving? I don't know. Because it looks really similar to Christine. Is it? I don't in a remember. yellow beat down Plymouth Fury? I, I no, we're going to have to go back. But it, I, it's something like that. Find that car because I'm pretty sure it looks just like that. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the owner of the garage also is uh, Robert Prosky. Yes. Inducted to the wall of Saturday Night Free Yay! Show Wall of Fame. Jonathan Lundy. <laughs> That's right, because he was in uh, he was in ICU, aka Deco Detox. Uh, okay. And he was also in Last Action Hero. He was. Mm. Yep. So there you go. Thanks to MF Mad, the keeper, aforementioned keeper oh, of the wall, you. for pointing That's that right. out. Um. So. Buddy returns. So basically, like, well, Lee gets nearly, she chokes on a piece of hamburger mm -hmm. while in Christine at the drive-in. Mm -hmm. 
Arnie Those fails. Crazy to, lights come on on the inside. Yeah. It's really yeah. right. Trying to like warm her up, like uh, trying to like heat her to death. That's oh. what it felt like. <laughs> I know. I wasn't sure. It was, it was like going. it's like an easy bake oven. At this, this point. is the first time I'm like, oh, she's choking on a, on the hamburger that she. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought Christine was like doing the carbon choked. monoxide uh, thing or whatever. Yeah, but no, no nope, hamburger. <laughs> it was a hamburger. Hamburger. Uh, because we find out that uh, the guy who owned the car, mm -hmm. his kid died by choking. Choking. Or no, his wife died by choking. No, the kid died the, by choking. The kid his, died. The wife, carbon monoxide. Yeah. yeah. So everybody who's been in this car has killed themselves. Or uh, been killed. Or been, been killed. Been killed, in, killed in the car. Mm -hmm. The owner of the, uh, Darnell, owner of the junkyard, mm -hmm. says, this is where Arnie keeps his car. Mm -hmm. um, he says something like, I knew a guy who owned that, a car mm -hmm. like that yeah. once. He could, uh, what was it? He had like a great fucking line. That's something That's you could good. feed him icicles and he'd still like. Oh, you could pour boiling water down his throat and he'd piss ice, ice cubes. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was a good line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, uh, and that's, uh, and he's, like, he's implying. He, he said, and he says, yeah, and he killed himself in it. Yeah, he, he's implying, he knows the guy. The, yeah. the story's implying that he knows the guy. Yeah. Or he knew the guy. I yeah. just kind of was like, well, he only died six weeks ago, according to the brother who sold Arnie the car. Wouldn't uh, Robert Prosky have been like, well, not only did he have a car like that, he had that beat down piece of shit car. No, you may not necessarily six weeks. put that together. Yeah, okay, maybe it was more than six weeks. Although maybe dude was lying. I was say brother's not very trustworthy in that regard, yeah. so he could be lying. Did we say that the brother was played by Robert's Blossom? Yeah, mm -hmm. the frail old creepy dude from uh, Home Alone, from every movie he's probably been in. <laughs> yeah, deranged, right? The uh, <laughs> Ed Gein story. Yeah, deranged. Anyway. What else has he been in? Oh, oh man, Blossom. he's been in. He's been in tons of shit. So many things. Bearded old frail dude yep. with you know, very pronounced cheekbones. He could probably mm -hmm. like lift you. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing. And oh, just he has like, old man strength. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> he has old like, man strength. I'm sure he's looked like sure. that his entire life, but mm -hmm. he like, you wouldn't want to mess with him. He's way yeah. Well, the thing that really sets this movie in motion then is uh, in for out as an act of revenge, the bullies break into the garage mm. and completely destroy Christine in what has got to be one of the most shocking? No, is it shocking? It's hor it's, hor it, it's, it's horrifying. Uh, yeah, uh, it's right <laughs> the, up there with uh, uh, Johnny Five getting torn apart in Short Circuit Two. It's just oh, like this is a snuff heart. movie for cars. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, you see it. Ha it's like yeah. it's a gratuitous like torture porn snuff movie for cars. Oh yeah. yeah, it's the rape scene of Christine. It's it was horrible to watch, and it goes on for so long. Yeah, yeah they just, smash her with a sledgehammer, and then they're busting her, <laughs> just tearing. In that fucking car mm -hmm. apart. It's oh, the the, the 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 long knives to the seats yeah. and kicking in the radio. Oh my it's god! It's like brutal. Robocop. <laughs> it's like Murphy's death scene. Yeah, it just well, hurt, it hurt, I mean, it's just, just like oh, I don't want to watch it. Let me ask you this, okay? I mean, because obviously there's the level where we're looking at a classic car get destroyed, and now you're like, oh my god, they're you know like no, no, no stop. Yeah. Right. you're destroying a classic car. But there's also as a as a character at that point, it's are a living you, thing. Like we're watching something get murdered. Yeah. Okay. So you are seeing it. Yeah. It's both. Okay. Yeah. 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 I it's saw both. it that way. Yes. You are identifying enough with Christine yes. to be like. Well, yeah. That's it, why when Arnie comes back in, it's like he's finding a corpse in there, and it's just like, oh. When it's not even like it's really gratuitous. It's not just like they take some baseball bats. Like no. we talked about, there was even bullet holes in it at one point. Yeah. You know, like yeah. they they used a variety of it. It was very premeditated because they use a variety of instruments over a period of time. Yeah. So and we I'm, don't I'm, see it, but the worst indignity apparently is one oh, of them yeah. shit on the dashboard. I know. <laughs> yep. Oh my God. So you can imagine how Christine smells. But then that gives us uh, our big showstopper moment where it is revealed that Christine is actually. A sentient creature. And yes. can heal herself. She's Wolverine. That's yeah. pretty awesome, though. It, it is. is. Awesome. Your first time watching it, Sean. What did yes. you think? Uh, it was cool. I like when he walks in front of the... He, she's all messed up, and he walks in front of her, and he goes, show me. Yeah. yeah. And then she starts I like putting it. herself back together. That's so like, this is all reversed, right? There's some yeah. version of the car that they started like sucked into itself. And then just reverse the footage to build her That's back up. That's what it looked like. Because it looked like pieces were just getting like sucked and crumpled in. Yeah. They used a, there's like hydraulics. this vacuum form. Yeah. Well, for like the actual car parts, right? Yes, they used hydraulics to but do it. Didn't they actually like vacuum form some of, like they made molds out of. Like, oh, I'm sure they did. And then yeah. those things, I guess you can crumple them up and they just go right back to where they yeah, were. Yeah, they made like replicas of the car out of a type. I don't know what the, what the material was. But yes, you're, you're right. It was. Yes. 
moldable, basically. Yeah. That they, they use hydraulics it, and it so could it looks just, cool, yeah. but once yeah. you let it go, it mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah. whoop, goes right back yeah. to where it yeah. Done very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see that, some version of this, something reforming in other movies, and you're just like, you can tell it's just reversed footage of something being torn down. Mm-hmm. It looked really good in yeah, this movie. Yeah, it plays really well. Yes. Like, even now, you know, most most scenes like this you see now it's just like oh that looks bad and it yeah. just dates the movie I thought it looked great no, it looks yeah. good yeah. it still works yep mm-hmm. practical effects right so when there's actually light hitting an object it looks more real yeah, <laughs> what did you know? who thought? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Christine takes off on a rip roaring uh, rampage of revenge Bravo. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah, bravo. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was going to put in there. Yep. Rampage yeah, of you Revenge. Go. You got all the R's. Yeah. Um, nice alliteration, Colin. But those are pretty good scenes. What do we think about it? Basically, she goes after all the... Um, I liked it. The, yeah. The, the my, loading dock one is so dope. One of my favorite choices of that is, at this point, they have painted Christine's windows black. Mm. Yeah, I that's good. love that choice. It's a good it's choice. Par- it's partially so that you can't see if there's a driver or not. Right. And... um. Partially just for effect, so you think she's that bad. They, yes, yes, <laughs> and I love it. It Looks was good. it was not so loved by the stunt drivers, however. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure. Well, there was one scene where, where after Christine had been burned, that you could see that there was just this one little piece mm-hmm. in the window where, like, dude had to be like, yeah. you know, I could yeah. see through this. I wiped yeah. a little piece off so I can drive through it. Um, that's like the like that's like Christine's version of like when a robot's eyes turn red when yes. they're evil, like her windshields yes. turn black. Yes. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the demon possession. Yeah, that's great. Black. Yeah, she. Uh, one of the scenes is pretty cool. She chases. That's like the iconic. If you've seen anything from Christine, probably it's, it's this chase, guy running yeah. from the car, mm-hmm. and uh, she chases him into a loading dock. Mm-hmm. So awesome. And then you know you're like okay well fine he, he you know he, she, she can't go in there it's too small of a space well he'll find a way <laughs> she just like forces her way into that space because distri- you're like well you think she's going to try and keep herself together right, right. but no, no she, she doesn't care <laughs> she doesn't have she doesn't to have to yeah, yeah. yeah she's, she's going to be able to reform herself. afterwards but like she must have had to get some serious speed to cut him in half like they said he was mm-hmm. well that's like, what I'm like how much like lift or whatever do you have you know to yeah. push on those yeah. wheels to mm-hmm. get in there. Mm-hmm. Hey, she's point, possessed, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. Yeah. She and then the, the other big sh- uh, showstopper moment is uh, when she goes after, I was kind of disappointed that she got three in one go, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Right. You want it spread out a little bit? Yeah. 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 yeah it kind of would have been nice to have little set, different set pieces for mm-hmm. each one, in which, you know, they did the two, but it's, it ultimately it ends up in one of the coolest things I've seen in a while. Well, um, when uh, Christine turns into the car from hell. <laughs> I love that. What do you mean? Well, she turns into Ghost Rider, basically, at this she's point. She's completely on fire. She's going, and she goes after Buddy and the other three guys who wrecked her in the first place, and so she's just crashing through everything. She crashes into his car, then she crashes into it again, which takes out one of the dudes in the shop, and then his car starts leaking gas, and the whole thing just explodes, and Buddy runs away, and then she comes out of the garage, and she's fully on fire. Mm-hmm. And that's a fucking awesome image. Uh-huh. Like, she looks good. Yeah. I like her as that. And then she goes after Buddy and runs his ass over, and he's in flames in the middle of the road. That's awesome. <laughs> love it. Uh-huh. Oh, it's good. That was pretty good. She's good. I love her as the demon car. I think they lifted that scene for, uh, was it The Strangers Pray at Night? They oh, did. Really? They did an homage to Christine where they had a car on fire chasing somebody. Bastards. Yeah. Probably didn't do it as well. Well, then uh, Christine goes back to the uh, the the car lot. Yeah. And smoking. and the then she kills the car the car lot owner, Mr. Darnell. Yeah. Right? Who I guess in the in the book he was having Arnie do some like drug deals or something. Like yeah. he was involved in Yeah, there was a there was a big plot in the book with with the auto shop owner. He um he had him working for him and forced him to be a, sort of like a I don't say drug mule, but essentially kind of a lackey <laughs> just like drugs that. Drugs up his ass. Mm. <laughs> that story takes a weird turn. I mean, it, yeah, it, there, there's a whole plot there, and they they really didn't. The only thing they pulled from the book, really, was there was that whole scene when he says, okay, well, I'll let you take some parts from around the shop if you just do some some small jobs. They incorporated that just to give him a little more depth. They pulled that straight. That dialogue is pretty much straight from the book. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, there's a whole big plot where that goes further in the book. Well, I know that it, it does. It gives Arnie an alibi because apparently yeah. that means Christine's been killing these people 
possibly without Arnie's knowledge. Yeah. Because right. eventually the police get involved in the form of uh, Harry Dean Stanton, right? Yeah. Uh, he's like investigating, but can't find any evidence, even though there's evidence apparently all over the crime scenes. There's no evidence on Christine. Yeah. That, you know, she's never been damaged or whatever. No damage, no blood. Yeah. I like that scene when Arnie comes up, you know, and uh, and the detective tells him that, you know, your boss was found dead in your car. And Arnie is like, why? And I think he's talking to Christine <laughs> at that moment. You know, that's that probably. Moment where like, <laughs> and then he realizes who he's, you know, like, oh, they're here. Uh, uh, I got to get out of here. <laughs> you know, um, I didn't really think about that, but I think you're right. That first, yeah, because yeah. he's like, why'd you kill him? You know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but Arnie and Christine are completely simpatico in love. Uh, Lee eventually falls by the wayside in that relationship and has to go to uh, Dennis because she's worried, right, that Arnie's gone over the, the edge and mm -hmm. into yeah. dangerous territory, especially with people being killed. So the Lee zone. and uh, and Dennis team up. Um, after Arnie takes Dennis out on a, on a joy ride where he's like, look, my no hands kind of yep. thing. Um, so then they have to, uh, Lee and, uh, Dennis have to conspire how to kill Christine. How do you, how do you kill a car that can keep coming back from the dead? Right. What's your plan? Gotta crush it. Yep. You really got to crush it. Mm -hmm. You got to bring in heavy, heavy machinery. Yeah. They, they bring a, uh, a fucking, uh, bulldozer, bulldozer. Mm -hmm. yeah. that they're going to, uh, somehow like trap trap her in the place but i still don't see how like this bulldozer goes like two miles an hour and mm -hmm. like how this is gonna stop her yeah. but you know there's a good jump scare there with christine's already i i didn't i wasn't <laughs> expecting that wasn't expecting that i was it's good. hard to pull off a jump scare with a car right yeah, yeah. but well done <laughs> maximum overdrive tries and does not that's true succeed yeah. at it. that is true did you know that the story that Maximum Overdrive was based on, mm -hmm. called Trucks, was mm -hmm. actually written before Christine? Mm -hmm. So Stephen King's always had a thing for uh, yeah. possessed mechanicals. Yep. He has another one, too. Mr. Mercedes, is that what you're thinking of? No. But I, I think that is... That is a, there is a car involved in that very heavily. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. I would hope. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember what it was called. There was another one. Mm. I don't know. Well, the... Uh, yeah, in the end... Uh, it is Christine facing off against um, the the caterpillar. Yeah. Or is it John Deere? Is it a cat? It's a caterpillar. Yeah. Okay. So in the end, I'm not entirely sure right. how successful some of the orchestration is here in this action yeah. sequence. Because I'm not entirely. It seems like it needed a big crescendo to something. Arnie is at one point just arbitrarily ejected through the front window yeah. of the car and dies yeah it does take a hot minute for them to reveal that arnie is actually in the car yeah. would it have been better if they didn't show arnie in the car because there's a shot of him all lit by the green yes. you know yeah. glow of the which is an iconic shot i think everyone has seen that that moment when he's all like glowy he looks almost dead because mm -hmm. he's like blue he's very yeah. creepy looking. yeah i f i feel like they should have since if they were going to go and show him in the car there should be I thought there should have been like a moment where he takes control of himself and ejects himself out of the car, like to to stop that he tried to try and stop this from happening. Um, if you're not gonna like, if you don't show him, then the him coming out of the car into the shop is a surprise. Um, but they should have. Yeah, it feels like they should have made a choice either way because it does feel like you said arbitrary that he just gets ejected and dies. Do you like, get a sense end? that um, Arnie has any kind of? internal conflict because we're saying he's being possessed no. we know he's possessed because he's dressing like a guy from the 50s but he's also using the word shitter a lot you know yes. shitter's got to die just like robert's blossom did mm -hmm. and supposedly his brother did um but yeah he's so i feel no conflict. internal conflict i think he likes it no yeah I, I don't feel a conflict and then there's the moment when he is ejected and he he grabs onto lee like he's hugging her and at that moment, I was like, okay, maybe there is still part of him in there. But then he immediately turns and is like fondling the right. bumper of the car. And Touching I'm, her I was like, okay, I, think, I was like, this is, whoa, 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 yeah. this is R-rated, folks. Yeah. Like, let's yeah. tone it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I think he I think he died for the woman he loved. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty well, sure. there was a moment, I guess, with the detective where he was like, you know, He's like, I, I honestly don't know what's going on. Yeah. You know, it, that felt like the real kid. You yes, know? I agree. Because he's putting on a front. But at that point, he's like, you know, I don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, does he really not know what's happening? Does I he not like, know it's Christine? 
I f- well, I feel like because he was and this is weird, and there's, there's nothing in the movie that says this, but I feel like the farther he gets away from Christine, the less it's kind of working on him. When he gets near her, it well, the, her pull is stronger on him. There's also the the factor that like I think he knew that the bullies were going to die, but he didn't know his boss was going to die. I think mm. that's the only right. part of it that He's he was like, like bad wait, whoa, oh, whoa, sure. like, I thought you, you just kill, killed yeah. bad people. Yeah, I think that's the part where the kid comes out and he's like, why'd you kill my boss? Like, yeah. mm-hmm. But otherwise, I think he's in sync with her. Yeah. Well, there was also a scene where he was on the phone with uh, Lee where, you know, he's kind of like, you know, I love you, Lee. And, you know, uh, are you going to leave me or not? And then he gets furious and he yells at her and tells mm-hmm. her to fuck off or something. Mm-hmm. And then immediately... He kind of realizes what he said, and that you know, I mean, that's uh, yeah. You know. But that scene, and he's I feel, like, Lee, Lee, are you there? And she's hung up. That and he's scene, like, I feel like, because I think the whole the whole reason he called her was he wanted her to come down to the garage. I think the plan was to get rid of her. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So I think oh, he was. Okay. I think he was panicking because like, oh, this plan's not going to work. That's why he was like, Lee, like he wanted because he really wanted her to come down because she was she had to go. Because she okay. was she was the reason that the detective was on to him in the first place. That might be the case because I mean I don't feel it doesn't feel genuine that he's like you know exactly, ah but yeah. I still actually do love Lee. I'm like no, no you're pretty committed to your yeah. other lover yeah. here. No, I don't think I had anything to do with love. I think it was part of the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, in the end, Arnie is killed and uh, Christine gets fucked to death by a do- bulldozer. Basically. Mm-hmm. There, there True or false? Go. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. It, the bulldozer mounts her from by. Okay. All right. And Jesus. <laughs> totally p- rolls right over this beautiful car. In yeah. another snuff <laughs> For scene. For a long, yeah. long time. They want us to hurt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, but she's the she's the monster, the sure. villain at this point, I right? Really wish Do you they still feel for Christine? I really wish she's they would have just gone all out, all out and done like car fluids spurting out. Uh, yeah. Like a true, yeah. like, yeah. death yeah. scene. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been great. All the oil just pools. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. That would have been car. so great. I was I was kind of honestly expecting the, like, junkyard giant magnet bit. I thought that was going to be how they were mm. defeated her. Sure. Like, it's been a while since I've seen this. The... It was like, yeah, pick her up, drop her, and then crush and then her. And crush her. Yeah. Like, that would have been the way to go, right? Yeah, yeah that's what I thought like was going to happen. that happened. We just didn't see it. Right. Like, after the fact. After they yeah. rolled the, you know, pin her underneath and roll her underneath the... Especially because uh, the... they're at a junkyard. So, like, yeah. that would have mm-hmm. been That's... the logical thought right. step I Why thought it would take. Yeah. No giant magnet. Yeah, they lure her into the thing, get mm-hmm. her with the magnet, yeah. crush her, and yeah. then you could still have the same ending that you have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. apparently in the novel, it ended differently. Arnie and his parents were killed in a car accident about the same time that Christine dies. Uh... Like, they are not in the same... Or I think maybe... Arnie has killed either mom or dad. He dies like coming back from one of the the drug runs or whatever. Huh? Uh, when Christine is killed because they're in sync. Sure. Huh. But he's not actually there. So I think it is better. It works better for me anyway that he's present. It's a better movie. movie. Yeah. I agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It works better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I do find it. I do find it. Um, leaving me with more questions at the end though, when the detective is there in the junkyard with them, and he's just like. Seems to be on board with what just happened. Right. He's like, so she killed a lot of people. It's just like, wait, what? It's like, Why wait, are you on this? It's like, wait, like, so you know it's a killer car? Yeah. Like, like the, what is what is the the end there? Yeah, like, so what does he you, know? You people are heroes. Like, yeah. What does it look For like who? to the police? Is exactly. What I, know. Exactly. <laughs> I, I was expecting like some line of dialogue to be like, so uh, Arnie was killing people, mm-hmm. which is what right. I think the Something. cop, which is what I think Something. the cop thinks. Yeah. But he's got, there is no evidence. There's not a shred because all of it. You know, Christine keeps reforming herself. Uh, well, I think, I think until they just the take end. all the circumstantial yeah. evidence and just put it together. And yeah, just like he did it. It's yeah. all, all these people that were a problem in his life are now dead. Right. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. Who's, yeah. Who has the most motive? It all fits enough for the cop. Yeah. who's just like gates closed because <laughs> that's how it works. That's how. Yep. He's like, good enough. Found our guy. Woohoo. Yep. So they get to stand around and watch as Christine is finally defeated once and for all and smushed into it. Well, again, like we said, we don't mm-hmm. see it, but we get to see the after effects that yes. Christine's been crushed down into a little rhombus box or a little rhombus of <laughs> car parts. Do you think Ted Bundy ever tried to use the excuse that it was his car killing people? His famous Volkswagen bug <laughs> was actually murdering people, not him. Oh, shit. Herbie, the love bug. That's another autonomous car. Yeah. All right. That came before yep. Christine. True. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Wasn't Thanks. a malevolent one, though. Maybe. If he saw the love bug, he's, you know, like, mm-hmm. right? My, my car's Could, killing people, yeah. not me. Okay, well. But is she gone? 
well, we, the little we, twitch we, of the yeah. chrome. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> yep. So where is so Christine great. too? Yeah. Christine too. We got the car too after like thirty years. Like we don't have Christine too. Right. Buddy's mm-hmm. revenge. Mm-hmm. Right. Buddy comes back driving Christine. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like sometimes they come back. Like uh, hell bent for leather. No, that's a that's a hell on wheels. Christine too. Hell on wheels. And that's no? too obvious. Mm-hmm. That's okay. too obvious. Oh, could she go to a classic car show? And to her, that's like a zoo. It's like wow, you're oh, just like parading us all oh, out here. This is so insulting, and like it's like oh. like that like pushes her over the edge, and there's a massacre at like a car show. Back. But there would be yeah. more cars possessed, right? Like she f- she recruits. At the Can car she show? like spread her possession? I like, don't know. Well, I don't no, know. I These are like questions for the back. sequel, yeah. right? Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Do you want taglines? Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I like this new this new segment of the show. I love taglines. Taglines. She'll possess you, then destroy you. She's death on wheels. She's Christine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Once she lures you behind her wheel, you're all hers. Body by Plymouth, soul by Satan. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That's the best one. Seductive, passionate, possessive. Say hello to Christine, your girlfriend, the car. Mm, I don't no. know if I like these other ones. No. She's the devil incarnate. She's Christine. Incarnate. Mm. Yeah. Hell, health, no fury like a 1958 Plymouth. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my favorites. Uh, yeah. Those are great. Body by Plymouth, soul by Satan is <laughs> yeah. the best one. That's great. Well, that uh, I guess uh, tell you what, listener, you're going to hear if we would recommend Christine to you. You always think you know how these things are going, and then we sit around and we talk about it afterwards, and it turns out like nobody nobody liked Christine. And you're shocked, shocked. Mm. So maybe that's what's happening right now. I'm looking at Sean. I don't know. Sean's always he's a wild card. <laughs> he's the wild card. Yeah, <laughs> he's not giving anything away. No, Poker no. face. Okay. <laughs> so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna answer some of your mail. Then we're gonna go around and review the movie. So to get our mail, we need to bring it here through our mailman Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He's got a little greaser look going on today. He he loves his leather jacket. He pulls Mm -hmm. it out every now and again. Mm -hmm. That's it? <laughs> I, I, well, he's not, Igor doesn't know what a car is. I know he's not. He isn't a car. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't not have a car. Like, uh, what was it? Though like, he can put himself back together after he's been destroyed. Yeah, so he he's usually got does. That yeah. I will say, if Igor does come home and say I bought a car, I would probably. I'm probably gonna be mad because that means it's gonna be our responsibility. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm not. He's, he's not, he's not parking that fucking thing <laughs> in my driveway. I'm yeah. not teaching him how to drive. I was yeah. saying, he cannot drive. Mm-hmm. No. Oh, well, no. No, he cannot drive. He's gonna It'll be like his legs aren't long enough to even you know reach what the car bundles. he would bring home. What's the car from Beetlejuice the cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> the one that when it gets angry, it turns into like a like a, a demon beast car, a hairy car. <laughs> Don't know. Uh, what's I know it what you're talking called? about. All right, I'll think about it because I know what it's called. Some time on that one. So first <laughs> of all, let's remind folks how they can get a hold of us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter at Saturday Freak Show. By email, Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Michael Kent writes in and says, "I just came across your podcast and I can't get enough of it. You guys are all thoroughly." knowledgeable and i learned something every new every new time i listen to your show every episode feels like i've been listening for 10 minutes yet an hour has passed i've been steadily getting my kids 10 12 and 15 into the genre over the past few years and i built a full theater with tiered seatings velvet curtains etc at home just to have friday night movie lights great times and the boys never miss it also wow. i own a company that has a picture car division and i built and Ooh. organized all the vehicles for pacific rim the resident evil series robocop pixels and a ton of small productions etc so i was super thrilled Shit. to hear you mentioned the dodge interceptor m4s from the wraith <laughs> it's one of the sexiest movie cars uh, on the phantasm <laughs> podcast yes. that was awesome uh, that's funny the wraith will never go away uh, Spice. Uh, okay, so about tonight's <laughs> movie, Christine. Well, thank you very much. Yes, Michael. thank you for hitting in. That's, That's great. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's cool. that, I love that. That's amazing. Um, thank you for your service. See how yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, see uh, about Christine. See Huds. Up to Chuds. Wrote in and he said, "I was in a Michael store tonight, and they had a Christine model kit for sale." That's Ooh. amazing. I kind of want to do that. That's kind of nice. That'd be that fun. Is kind of. Uh, it's like a good right looking now. car. I mean, what did Christine's back? It's a huge like deal. Uh, Nick Siebel writes in and says, "It's such an underrated John Carpenter film. I love the chase scene with Christine on fire. Oh yeah, such an awesome shot. Yeah, yeah, it's great." 
uh, Travis or Eric Kirby writes in and says, "Finally." <laughs> I'm Didn't glad. realize so many people were clamoring yeah. for this. I yeah. know. Uh, Travis Legler <laughs> says this is a great movie. For Stephen King movies about killer machines, I prefer Maximum Overdrive, but this is a classic. The mood, the tone, the music is all great. The book was more fun with how the car was coming alive with the original dead owner driving and killing people. However, this movie follows a lot of the book closely. I'm very excited to hear the freak show's views. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that like Maximum Overdrive is like, fast food and this is like fine dining you know like they're yeah. <laughs> they're both great but fast sometimes food. you want a steak sometimes you want yes, you, yeah. Yeah. you know <laughs> maximum overdrive we did that uh, did. on a freak show you can go back and listen to Wish the day that, uh, that. I know, what was too. it i was having a perfectly fine day until every car in the world <laughs> so went into maximum, maximum, maximum overdrive. overdrive oh my god <laughs> let's watch it again yeah. i don't know what a road twitch is a road oh. twitch. yeah he calls her that the hitchhiker girl. Oh. Call, she says she's a road twitch. They call her a road twitch a bunch. And I'm uh, just it's like, not good. Is that like a junkie that hitchhikes <laughs> yeah. or something? Like, yeah, oh, it could be. Like, oh, the twitch it's, that would make it's, sense. It's like th- that's one of those times. You know, sometimes Stephen King will try to make up like new slang in his books, and yes. it never works out. I think that <laughs> like was Diablo one of those Cody. times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got his own exact yeah. vernacular. Like yeah, you shitter. Yeah. Shitter. Who says that? Michael Whitaker says, you're about to watch one of the only horror movies my kids actually like. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, granted, what they've gotten to see on uh, is only the TV cut that appears on AMC. Mm. But the fact that it's a car that drives itself and fixes itself has proven to be very popular with seven and four year old boys in my house. <laughs> I highly recommend to any parent with younger kids that a TV version of Christine is a pretty good starter horror movie. Or maybe I'm just a bad parent. I have a terrible gauge for these things. <laughs> Colin, I mean, uh, you stabbed me when you said TV cut. And you looked at me. You stabbed me yeah. with your eyes when like, you said that. Like, Sean, don't even the think TV about cut. it. Yeah. Did Sean know about the TV cut of Christine? What if it's not on to, this, I'm not watching it. What is there really to cut out for There's a TV not, cut? A lot of, yeah, I was just saying, it's only got to be but It's not that Sex gory. Talks. Like, hmm? yeah, Sex talk. Eh, even that, I don't think it's really. It's eh, mainly just. It's mainly just the fox. I'd probably yeah, cut I'm, a lot of the. Grease gets aired on TV. There's a lot sure, of sex I'm talk sure. in that. Uh, there one buddy who talks about Lee at the beginning. I'm guessing that probably got cut. There out. was yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a, a scene in the car where they were talking. Yeah, I'm like that. Oh whole yeah. Thing there's some be... reaching into blouses that are probably gets cut out. Yeah. Well. Grant Parrish writes in and says, "There's nothing finer than sitting down to watch Christine, except maybe for one other thing." Hmm. Watching Maximum Overdrive, right? Yep. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> right there with you. Uh, ben Evett, number one, says this is an underrated gem. It's a good popcorn movie. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Jolo Ho Ho writes in and says one of Carpenter's best. It's probably I've probably seen this over a hundred times. Damn. Just curious, what are some of your favorite scary car or truck movies? My top five would be Christine, Duel, Joyride, The Car, and The Hearse. What do we have, oh, Sean? Oh, Joyride. I like Joyride a lot. Does the Hitcher count? I think so. Well, yeah. Carmen, it, it's a the, road it movie. It takes place almost entirely in a car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Holly. Joyride's good. Mm, uh, Joyride's good. Um, I mean, Maximum Overdrive, Maximum is, Overdrive is, the is fun. Good. It's yeah. fun. And, yeah, I think I like Christine better than Maximum Overdrive. You know what though? I don't. Uh, I like I th- Duel. I think, I think Duel yeah. is, is a good one, but it's kind of Duel. it's kind of a slow movie. Yeah. Well, then you got like it's it's, of, it's a good concept, but it's hard. It's kind of slow. Games. Well, you got yeah, road games. I've never seen road games. Neither have I. We need to watch that. Well, but that's not really a car. It's more it's of like more the it's, dude. A, it's a truck and a van. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you got the opening to uh, Jeepers Creepers, which is kind of like yes. dual light. That's very true. I suppose. Um, Jesus. Oh. Uh, well. Okay. Never mind. I was gonna say if we're talking like for cool looking cars, though, cool, we're still like going cool with like Phantasm, shit. right? Well, yeah. The question or, yeah, uh, is, a self driving car. It's, it's scary car. It's like no, scary saying, cars. For scary yeah, cars. It's like the like, Phantasm hearse. No, it's like killer cars, isn't okay. it? Yeah, right. yeah. That's, that's why I said I wasn't sure if the Hitcher counted because yeah. It's, yeah, it's a hitchhiking movie. I mean, it's about a very a murder. It's a, killer cars is a small pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. He was gonna think of like what's a crazy killer vehicle that's like really scary. Well, even in high tension, the I guess the thing that that guy, yeah, the wraith, the wraith right? kills yeah. people. Okay. Uh, Jamie Tyler writes in and says, if you had carte blanche over King's entire back catalog, what would you choose to adapt or readapt for the big screen? Who would you cast and who would be your ideal choice of director? Sean. Oh, geez. Uh, I would, uh, I would redo it, <laughs> except I wouldn't do it for the big screen. Uh, I would make another miniseries out of it. Oh, um, for HBO I think, this time. I, yeah, I think it could be done better in that. Uh, as far as directing, who who would I have direct in it? That's a tough one. Um, 
I don't have to think about that one. All, all, of, shine. all of my uh, favorite directors have let me down recently, yeah. Yeah. so it's hard to choose. Like who would David I want to put Fincher? In that? Just go. Well, David I thought, Fincher's I thought about that, and Boom. I'm just like, but he wouldn't do certain parts of that justice. Yeah. I don't think. No, nah, yeah. skip me. I'll come back to that one. All right. I've been thinking about this question since they posted because I love dream casting questions. I love to dream cast <laughs> movies. So this is I love it. So dream casting. So I would do. I would actually remake Dreamcatcher. Yeah, that was one of them. I would remake Dream Dreamcatcher and have Fede Alvarez direct it, but I would gender flip it so it's four women. Plus well, five with Dunnitz. But Dunnitz. Yeah, I don't I don't know who I would cast for Dunnitz because I mean Donnie Wahlberg Rebels. seemed pretty perfect for that. <laughs> but uh, um for the four women instead of the four men I would cast Naomi Watts, Tony Collette, Ming Na Wen, and Tandy Newton. Right. And then I would also do a legit version of Cycle of the Werewolf that's not Silver Bullet. Mm. And that's I would have good. Mike Flanagan direct that one. Ooh, nice oh, choice. Ooh. And then I would I like that. do another version of Carrie, but I would actually make it like the book where Heresy. Yeah. <laughs> I hey, this is the question. This I didn't. The, the question, question yeah. is, what would I do? This is what I would do. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the De Palma movie, but the last remake was not great. No. But um, I would do because the book is actually after the event has already happened, and they're interviewing people, like they're kind of putting together like a documentary almost. So I would actually make a fake documentary after the event has already happened, and it's talking heads of people that lived through it, and then you cut to flashbacks of the events mm. actually happening. And I would have Catherine Bigelow direct that. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. There you go. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she got down and dirty again like she did with uh, the... Point Break. Yeah. The The Hurt Locker. Locker. Vampire Near movie. Dark. Oh, Near Dark. Jesus. Okay, I was going to go with yeah, the, the, the Widowmaker. Okay. That one. <laughs> All right, Holly, what do you got? Anything on that? Jesus. Uh, was it was it strictly Stephen King? Yep. Yeah. If you I could, so. yeah. Mm-hmm. I have, uh, I, this is the first time hearing this question, so I haven't really put a lot of thought into it, and I don't really want to follow Michaela because hers was really good. <laughs> but I will say I'd be interested in a gender swap uh, stand by me. Yeah, I think that'd, that'd be, be cool. cool. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool. cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Right yeah. Ooh, maybe an actual good version of 11 22 Hmm. Wasn't that but like an Amazon like a, series, it was, with, right? With, with with fucking Franco in it. Oh yeah. But like as a thriller, I think they could make a really good thriller out of that. Yeah. Man, now you said Cycle of the Werewolf. I'm like shit. I would have we liked need to a do version. a new if they Cycle could do of the a Werewolf. Good werewolf. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, if you've seen one. Silver Bullet, that really sucks. Good. That it's story is pretty good. Yeah. But I always, I've always wanted to see. Like, well, I guess maybe I wanted to direct it. I wanted to yeah. do. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to do uh, Jerusalem's Lot, which is like this period. Uh, you know, horror thing mm-hmm. with like a you know the old village that everybody's mm-hmm. forgotten about. And it's, mm-hmm. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I think with Cycle of the Werewolf, you might have to age the kid up a little bit. I think ten is like a little too young. I think like twelve or thirteen would probably be a lot better. Yeah, if you get one of those, the Stranger Things kids. Yeah, right. Yeah. Back, back yeah. a couple of years ago, and yeah, they, yeah. Jesus, we they're too old now. The Stranger Kid thing and Stranger Things kid and anything ever again. I'm well, tired. What do you of got life. against them? <laughs> <'Cause laughs> I think they're in. Yeah, they're, they're in. in everything. The, Finn Wolfhard's in the Ghostbusters Turn of the Screw uh, remake. Oh yeah, and Ghostbusters. That's right. Some of those kids are good. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a problem kids with them. At the moment. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. Maybe it's just Finn Wolfhard. I was going to say it's just Finn I, Wolfhard. I, I know it is. I'm tired I know of it is. Sophia Lillis. 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 Yeah. Isn't and she I, something? A little no. No. I really no. like uh, fucking. Um, well, who do you like? But what? Oh god, what is her? Is it Robin? What is her name? What is her Maya fucking... Hawk? Thank you. Yes, Ethan Hawk. Uh, Maya Hawk. And, uh, I really like her. What's I want to see her in more. Saw. Don't know. She. I you know who she season is. Three? No, I season three. No, I haven't even finished season two. Season three. I is don't great. like the. Show. She was in Once Upon a Time in I Hollywood. Did. Also, she was. I didn't uh, like season two, but season three is good. Season three. Is, I'll yes. never get to it. Great. I will never get to it. All right. Well, Jacob Laws writes in and says, uh, "Well, another uh, question for us. Oh, what are your top five John Carpenter movies?" He says, "For me, it's Halloween, The Thing, Escape from New York, Big Child in Little China, and they live." Honorable mention to Vampires because James Woods is so awesome in that movie. I remember really liking Vampires when I first saw it. Mm. It was on HBO. Yeah, it didn't lot. play all that well last time I watched it. Sure. No? What's your top five Damn John it. Carpenter movies? Uh, The Thing. Number one. Halloween. Number two. I have to look up the rest of his filmography. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. Thing, Halloween, yeah. Escape from New York. You would say Escape from New York. I don't like that movie. Uh, what? I yeah, you like Escape from, from L.A. LA. Yeah. I mean, that movie, I don't necessarily really thoroughly enjoy that movie, but I like it better than Escape from New York. Like, but again, the fog I in there? Am I going to go with the uh, fog? Uh, the fog was creepy as hell. It doesn't work yeah. as well now, but when I first saw it, the fog was like, I, like I really the, like Assault on like Precinct 13. Later day, John mm-hmm. Carpenter. Like the last good one was, I mean, the last good one was Big Trouble. Mm-hmm. And then you oh, had memos like, of an invisible man. Oh, for fuck! Yep, just I the, love that uh, movie. Get- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm going to say Halloween thing. Um, they live, Christine, and then Escape from New York. I have a lot of Carpenter blind spots. I haven't seen The Fog. 
there's some other things I haven't seen. So yeah. maybe uh, my list is like fluid <laughs> because of that. <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly, to round it out, I'm going to put in the mouth madness in there. Okay. That You're movie, just trying to be contrary. <laughs> that movie grew really, on me. Yeah, like, I is. didn't like it when I first watched it. I watched it a couple did times. Did you recommend since. it for this show? No, I didn't. Does Village of the Damned make it in there? No, it doesn't. Uh, I didn't recommend it for you this show. Bastard. But again, I've watched it a couple times since then, and it's grown on me, and I like it a lot oh, more. Sean. I know. I'm crazy. full. But memoirs. Thumbs up. <laughs> Where's right. Holly on All right. this? Um, oh, Lord. Okay. Thing, Halloween... This is not in order. Thing, Halloween, yeah. uh, Christine, The Fog, and... Uh, Starman. No, I'm kidding. Obviously. Yeah. Maybe Escape from New York, probably. Okay. Yeah. Right. There you go. Thank you very much. I'll lie to you. About last week's episode, The Baby. The Baby. <laughs> oh, God. Simon Carter writes in and says, well, it's late on Saturday night, my time. So you know what that means. And he has a bunch of uh, icons. Beer emojis. Whiskey emojis. Uh, I have never even heard of this movie. No fucking idea what's going on in this You're not picture. alone, buddy. So naturally, I'm looking forward to the episode to find out. I like hearing about these weird movies from you guys. I'll wait. For the judgment, and I go find them if they're recommended. No doubt this episode will be a blast. <laughs> it's something. Okay. I hope I hope it's a blast for you guys. <laughs> I really do. Uh well Grant Parrish says you announced and I watched. Wow. Oh, First boy. off, eyebrow game on point. <laughs> Secondly, what the fuck? Yes. Sean, you're actually driving people to watch this movie. Yeah, I know. To participate. All traffic's going up there. <laughs> yep. What do we watch it on? Shutter? Shutter. Yeah. Shutter is going to be freaking the fuck yeah. out right now. <laughs> Why like, is everyone watching the baby? <laughs> uh, about the previous week's movie, which was I Drink Your Blood, uh, Carson Snar writes in and says, I really need to see this movie. You Listen to it. the episode and you'll yeah. hear our thoughts like, on all that. All right. Well, some people agree with that. Sean Rogers calling me out because, uh, again, we were talking about Lynn Lowry on the episode right. where I was like, yeah, she was in Rabbit. No, she was <laughs> in Shivers, going. right? Uh, right. So when I put up the poster or the picture of her, I misidentified it. Sean was on the how, case. How dare he you. said, it's Shivers, not Rabbit. But I forgive you that, confu- that confusion was even mentioned in the podcast. What I can't forgive <laughs> is the amount of time dedicated to shitting on the national dish of Australia, the humble meat pie. Uh, Not going to lie, some of that hurt. I didn't realize that would be one of the most controversial things I we would either. have said on this show. I don't know, you guys are crazy. So but sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, like, because Sean, if I remember correctly, from Australia, I'm going to assume Australian meat pie is different than it's American like meat pie. pie. Is that where we're uh, going? Because American cuisine is kind of like built on taking other countries' <sighs> food and making it more gross. What you talk? We perfected the burrito, the San Francisco foil wrap burrito. The pizza? I mean, that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> but you should not claim that America perfected the burrito. Mm, that is not Chipotle something you should lay claim to. Thing that's ever yeah. been. I'm going to go to the mattresses for that one. Best food ever made, ever. The Chipotle brief. Okay. Nobody agrees with me. It's no, no, nope, I'm not a Chipotle fan. Uh, so no, I, I like Chipotle, that. but that's a big statement. <laughs> Artemis Grove writes in and, oh, okay. So we posted a picture that uh, was a bunch of the construction workers foaming at the mouth. Uh, Artemis Grove says, I don't think that's from rabies. Mm. It's a bunch of white. Sure, I got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Right. And so I like it. Jesus. That, uh, That's grosser than the baby altogether. I Drink Your Blood was part of a double feature with I Eat Your Skin when it came out. Mm. I Eat Your Skin writes in and says. Stop, stop looking at me when you say that. The remake starring Sonny Leone is a jungle cannibal horror flick with a different plot about foreign bird watchers in the Philippine jungles who stumble upon a burial ground haunted by a shaman who transformed them into transforms them into cannibals who begin raping, killing, and eating each other. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm stuck on the part that there was a remake. Jesus. Well, it's a remake that uh, with a different plot. Well, yeah, but I didn't even know that Still anyone made an attempt to, to remake these movies at the same yeah, time. I have heard of the original. Is, yeah. I think this is the account of the remake trying to say, I know, hey, I'm just, there's I a didn't, remake. I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. yeah. Gotcha. And you fell right into their hands. There you go. So now you they know. They got some free publicity, I guess, yeah. right? That's right. We're great. Because they wrote into the Saturday Night <laughs> That's Free right. Show. Or we pretty much read All it. are welcome to write in. Yeah, yeah. Um, Except for uh, Larry Block. Ex- <laughs> <laughs> Continue that beef now. <laughs> Except for that guy. Wow. Everybody else, you're welcome. Um, 
All right, so I guess it's that time of the night when we if go If he does write in, it'll be the only thing he's written since the fun house. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was, that was pretty good. Damn. <laughs> Kudos. Zing. Uh. Wow. You just, like, turn on the bat signal for him, Sean. <laughs> Bring it on, Block. <laughs> All right. All right. So you ready for the <laughs> the excitement? Yeah. The final part of our show? I think so. We're going to go around the room and review. Christine, are you ready? I'm ready. Colin. <laughs> Colin, are you ready? I was like, do I have to say <laughs> I don't know. Usually there's more buildup than that. Colin, what did you think uh, about tonight's movie? John Carpenter's Christine. Um, yeah, I'm, this is one of those. Uh, okay. So, I mean, I've told you already. John Carpenter, I think, is, pro- is one of the greatest. Well, yeah, I think, A, he is one of America's best uh, filmmakers. I think he is also one of America's most um, influential filmmakers, just from his output. You know, like all those films, uh, especially the early ones, are, um, you know, classics. This kind of, it, it was one that I honestly kind of overlooked over the years. Like, it never seemed to make as much of an impression to me as the other films in his oeuvre oeuvre you like that word um and tonight i figured out what it was Mm. i I figured out why john carpenter to me has always been a director of style right i can pick out the john carpenter style when i watch his stuff an auteur if you will yeah it's like yeah you can turn there's one of those things you turn the 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 if you cut off the credits you'd still know who made the movie sure um this one's different because this one uh well it's not shot by dean cundy yeah, yeah that's true well, that's right. Was that the first of the? That might have been the first of the the early five. Whatever that right. wasn't. But um, I was actually invested and involved in the characters in this movie in a way that I haven't been in other John Carpenter movies. Other John Carpenter movies, I kind of I watch them right, and there's other forces working at things, and you're watching, and you're kind of you're mentally going like, where's a. This was more like I actually was kind of, you know, through the performances and through these actors and these characters, I was invested in these characters in a way that I wasn't paying attention to the style of the movie. And I think that's why it always kind of never really felt like a John Carpenter movie. Right. Tonight, of course, you know, now I've got to the point where those two things are wedded in my mind. It's like, oh, that, that he is doing John Carpenter shit in his John Carpenter movie. Um, there's uh, It feels less like Stephen King. You know, to me, honestly, it yeah. feels more like a John Carpenter movie. But um, I really, uh, I think, you know, I overlooked it for years, and I think it is like a classic. It seems like it's getting a lot more attention now because I think a lot of people maybe did the same thing I did. You go like, well, John Carpenter, he's Halloween, and he's Escape from New York, and he's, you know, uh, the thing, and he's Big Trouble in Little China. Then you come back, and you're like, okay, yeah, but below that, right? Then you got Christine, you know, and movies like They Live and stuff like that in there. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is a four star movie. It was uh, I thought it was fantastic. I thought all the actors did well. Well, OK, three and a half. The ending didn't quite work for me. Mm. I wasn't quite sure who where everybody was, why they were doing what they were doing. And I thought that could have coalesced mm-hmm. in a better way or been bigger, maybe or something. Yeah. Uh, and delivered a little bit more. Maybe that's it. It didn't deliver. The big end of Christine that I yeah, was kind of she should have gone for. down like m- m- yeah something like a more motherfucker like yeah. something bigger Some fighting you know? yeah like the, the truck in duel screaming I'm telling you the car, the car <laughs> yeah. fluid the car fluid would have would have yeah. made yeah. it or if she was getting it. crushed it sounded like she was screaming like, yeah that would have been good yeah oh, god damn it yeah mm-hmm. but uh, beyond that yeah I think it's a great I mean because I usually when we sit here watching these movies uh, we're talking you know during the films. Uh, and usually this one we were pretty much silent on, and I was like, it's either because the movie is bad, and everybody's just tired, bored, and wants it to you know get up and get out of here, or it's actually working as a movie, and you're in its uh, you know the thrall. Engrossed. And I think that's yeah. what was happening. But uh, yeah, I, I thought it was like this is a really good movie, Christine. Uh, Sean, what do you think? Um, I think you hit a really good point there. Um, how it doesn't there there were a few moments that in this movie that I felt were. Uh, kind of evocative of the uh, John Carpenter style. Like, he, there's some handheld in this that felt like we were walking the streets of Haddonfield mm-hmm. at certain points. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, uh, at those moments, it felt more Carpenter. But yes, I think you do concentrate. Maybe it's because the cast is smaller. 
that we do concentrate on these characters more. Um, but I, I like the characters. I think they're pretty well, like, uh, they're pretty well fleshed out. I like Arnie. I like kind of like the journey he goes on. Again, like you said, the ending doesn't quite land it, both with where we end up with Arnie and where we end up with Christine. Um, but other than that, this is like, this is a very good movie. Um, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed a lot of it, especially when she turns into flaming car. Like that's fucking awesome. Um, they did a lot of cool stuff in this movie. Um, yeah, I had a good time. I enjoyed it. I think we were all quiet, or at least I was quiet because I was like, I was paying attention to this because yeah. I liked what they did with it. I liked, um, the, uh, Robert's Blossom character as well. Like I thought he was really cool. Uh, I want to see more of him. Um, I thought everybody did really good in this movie. So, uh, yeah, I recommend Christine. It's the first time seeing it tonight. I'm glad I can uh, check it off the John Carpenter list. Um, yeah, I recommend it. It's good stuff. Mm-hmm. Michaela. Yeah, I was quiet because I was completely sucked in and under the spell of this movie and just fully invested in that and like didn't even really notice time passing kind of like lost in it. Uh, I think it's really hard to personify a car and it's really hard to shoot a car like doing human sort of behaviors and have it not look hilariously stupid. Mm -hmm. So that alone, like Bravo, well done. uh, Like maximum overdrive. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like where they're spitting stuff out of the car and all you hear as it sort of flies out of the window or something. So I mean that alone is incredible. Um, I mean, it's Stephen King and John Carpenter would have to work really hard for me to not like it, you know, um, the, a marriage of these two things that I love. I do agree, Colin. It feels way more John Carpenter than it does Stephen King. Yes. Um, Agreed. Uh, uh, way more. It's crazy. But I, I mean, you think about like the directors that have adapted Stephen King's work. Uh-huh. He's had the, some of the best directors of all time adapt his work. He's had Brian De Palma, John Carpenter, Stanley Kubrick, mm-hmm. like, Man, has any Mick other Harris. author had Mick Harris? <laughs> Let's not forget yeah, Sleepwalk. Mick Harris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has like any other author ever had like any comparable like portfolio like that? Like that's insane. Okay. Um, so yeah, what's uh, what's who's going to Grisham? Um, yeah, John. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Grisham movies. Yeah. But man, that's like yeah. I I loved the way a lot of these scenes were shot and like I like was legit creeped out at like. When Christine's kind of stalking him down by where the the loading dock is, and he goes around that pillar, yeah, and the camera cool. comes out the other side of the pillar, it's like Christine's staring, like yeah. still, like even yeah. though it's a car, like but yet they still like they, translated the idea that he, the car was staring at him, which yeah. is like it should be really there, like, hard to do, coin, like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, how do you do that with a big, like, inanimate object that right. doesn't have any, like, way of you know demonstrating things like that? I love the aesthetic. I love the fifties vibe. I love the music. Love it all. Gotta watch it, Holly. Yeah, um, I love this movie. I, I I really love this movie. I always have. It's one of my f- absolute favorite John Carpenter movies, and I think we're all in agreement that it feels like a John Carpenter movie. And not that it's not that it's not a good thing when a movie feels like a Stephen King movie. Like that's that's great. I love Stephen King, but I think it says a lot about John Carpenter that he made it feel like a John Carpenter movie instead of it feeling like a Stephen King movie. I think that's that's that says something about his craft as a director. I think that's really great. Like I said, not that I don't want it to feel like a Stephen King movie because that's great too. But I just think that says a lot about Carpenter and I think it definitely shows his style. Um, I I love this movie. I think it's so, it it has so much personality. I I agree with Michaela. I agree with you. It's hard to give a car personality and not make it hokey. Mm -hmm. And they do it so well in this. And I love at the end when it's all ripped up and the bumper actually has like teeth. Yeah, that's that fucking was fantastic. I noticed that. That was good. I love that. It's it's just so it's it's like Jaws at that point. Yeah. It's become this wonder. Oh, it's it's just become this wonderful monster, and I think it works so well. And and I love that it still holds up. It's still a great movie. It makes me so sad when you watch a movie, you know, thirty something years later, and you're just like, oh, well, in the day it was probably great. It's still great. It's mm-hmm. still a fun movie. It's still a great movie. Uh, there's a how do you do a jump scare with a car? Like that's, it's wonderful. <laughs> I, I think there's so many great things about this movie. I, I don't really have much to say against it, except for we all agree that the ending could have had more punch to it. It, it could have wrapped things up a little better. It was a little scattered, but it still works. You know, that little twinge on the, on the block of car to, to let you know that she's still there. Like it still works. It's, it doesn't, it's not bad enough of an ending that it takes away from the movie. It's still an enjoyable movie. So I definitely think you should watch Christine. I think it's great. I think it's a great John Carpenter movie. 
staple in horror. And none of us even mentioned that there's, I mean, we did slightly mention, but we didn't say that the fact that there's not really any gore took away from the movie. Yeah. That yeah. says something mm-hmm. huge to me. Yeah. You know, that. Because they could have done it with the guy that got cut in half. Like they could have. They could have. They could have kept showing that until yes. he got. There could have been a lot of blood there. There could have been a lot of blood. Yeah. And you know what? Even if there had been, I would have been okay with that too. But the fact that there wasn't, it didn't really take anything away from me. So I think that's a huge accomplishment in a horror movie, you know, mm-hmm. um, that you still have a horror movie without all the blood is pretty spectacular. It's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, I think it's great. Definitely check out Christine. And it also is like a sideways Christmas movie. Yeah. It, is. Yes. it is. It is. <laughs> it is. We got it in there. Yes. Um, I, all right. Sequel idea. I thought of it. Uh, if they this goes along, if they hadn't like crushed her down completely. But if like multiple people were getting parts from it, and they grab one part, put it on one each car, part, one of these things, things car, creates a new part, car. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so each Christine one too. Becomes, yes. so it's like Bad a horde of Christine spread out through yeah. the land, and someone yeah. has to trace all the par- parts back to the yeah, car. Yeah, they got to figure it out and everything. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. happened after you got this new all right, part, Stephen King. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's on you now. Uh, okay, so next week. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it's that time of the year. It's just us. It's that time. <laughs> yep. We're going to go and do our annual best and worst movie. Wait, the five, five, five best, best, best one, worst. one worst of 2019. That's yes. right. This is always end, like guys. a big, uh, big moment. Yeah. We've all been watching a bunch of stuff, so we're going to yes. find out. We're going to have a long uh, discussion as we hash this out. Yes. Because we uh, all saw movies besides Countdown and Pet Cemetery. Yes. <laughs> Just so you know. And you check Ooh, too. which one's going to be the worst? You're going to have to tune in next week to find out. And so until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>